Christian dating. It can be really, really messy, super unbiblical. And today we're gonna look at some of the biggest stereotypes, questions, struggles in Christian dating. And I'm gonna share some biblical wisdom right from his word. Let's begin. To totally agree this is one of the hardest things to do for single people i know all too well that i really struggled and song of solomon if you guys don't know is like the romantic book in the bible that everybody always feels uncomfortable about because of the pomegranates if you know what i'm talking about but Song of Solomon actually provides really biblical wisdom on what to do when you are lonely, when you are searching, when you do want that companion for life. And it actually repeats it over and over again throughout the book. One of those times that it's repeated is in chapter three, verse five. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the doves of the field, do not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. You see the woman here in Song of Solomon, it's like she turns to her girlfriends and she's like, guys, do not awaken love before it pleases. I know you see me in my relationship because her friends are seeing her in her new marriage and they might want to wake up or stir up love before it's time. And she says, don't do it. It's not worth it. Wait. And I love that. That was like my verse that I hung on to all throughout high school. If you guys don't know, I didn't date throughout high school. And that was really hard at times, especially around like prom season or when I felt lonely or when I didn't feel pretty enough or whatever. And I hung on to this truth in Song of Solomon. And so maybe you needed to hear that TikTok or that truth today. All right, what's next? This guy I just started talking to is already telling me before my first date that he lives 25 minutes from me and can't move because he has a son that lives close to him. It sounds like these are people older in age starting to talk, not even dating, and they're already talking about marriage and the fact that like, hey, I live 25 minutes from you and I'm not moving. That's really funny. I guess it depends on your season of life. I would say Joe and I, before our first date, because we do view, you know, dating very seriously, we were, we did talk about marriage and we talked about kids on our first date, but our date was also eight hours long. It's good to take dating seriously and it's really good to not just date super casually. However, this might be taking it a little bit too far to just assume that is already an issue that you need to address. Y'all give me your feedback. I mean, moving is kind of a big deal, but 25 minutes isn't. So yeah, Christians can be a little intense. Can we just admit that? You don't wanna take yourself too seriously, but you also wanna take the investment of your emotions and your time seriously. But I can understand why this person would be a little bit freaked out. So there's also the aspect in Christian circles where we feel ashamed to have attraction to the opposite sex, where we don't want to acknowledge that we find attraction for even our spouse sometimes. Um, I've felt ashamed to make a joke about Joe being attractive before. I once had an old lady approach me and told me, I think Joseph, you know, my husband, is gonna be a great pastor, especially because he's easy on the eyes. And I was like, ma'am? No, is this allowed? Are you allowed to say that you find my husband, who is young enough to be your grandson, attractive and therefore you can listen to him as a pastor easier? Like, I was so floored by that. But there's also a space, if we can't acknowledge our attraction, um, we can't address our attraction and what is a biblical way of dealing with our attraction um, to an individual, if we're single or married. If you are a single person, divorced, a widow or a widower, we need to give room in the church to acknowledge that like there will be times where yes, you are looking for that person's left hand. I mean. I wasn't single for like super long in my life. Y'all know we got married before our senior year in college. So we were like the traditional Christian couple. But I remember um, he was like talking to a girl. We were all kind of gossiping about it at our dinner table. I remember being like, Joe is talking to so-and-so. How did she get to talk to Joseph Womack? 
how did she get his attention? And I remember being like a little jealous. There was an aspect of like looking at his left hand there, wanting to know somebody's availability and getting a chance in that. And I think we see that so perfectly with Ruth and Boaz and Naomi's rejoicing when she found out that Boaz was the Kingsman Redeemer, which is actually the pinnacle part of the book of Ruth. So if you guys don't know, Ruth is like very literary element packed. If you were to like take Ruth as a book and cut it directly in half, it's like mirrors itself. It mirrors each other. In fact, the Bible Project has a great video unpacking like the literary structure of the book of Ruth. I won't go super in depth, but the very heart, the very center verse of the book, Naomi recognizes Boaz as the Kingsman Redeemer. And it's like she's having this moment of, yes, he's available for Ruth. You know, yes, I see God's plan. Yes, this is a possibility. And she responds in chapter two, verse 20. May he be blessed by the Lord whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. You see, a lot of people make the mistake that the book of Ruth is about Ruth being faithful to her mother-in-law as a widow and following her mother-in-law and God providing for her a Kingsman Redeemer. But the story is not actually about Ruth. The story is actually actually about Naomi and God redeeming a woman who has completely lost all hope. She had lost her husband, she had lost her sons, she had lost all way of providing for herself. She had now reached like the bottom of the totem pole of society. She had lost all hope and God redeemed her. And this verse is her seeing his plan, seeing his redemption and praising the Lord for that. But I know a lot of you guys are single. There's a lot of my audience here who is searching for a mate, but you've kind of lost the hope of finding a partner because the dating world is so messy. And I wanted to tell you about our sponsor today. Higher Bond is like, like the future, the one little grain of hope that I have for Christian singles on actually finding a mate online. Dating apps are so messy. We've kind of addressed some of the issues here. It can be really hard to find a mate that agrees with you theologically, convictions, denominationally. Higher Bond wants to revolutionize Christian dating online. They know other dating apps oftentimes end up being a lot like the world. And so Higher Bond is actually a really great option. If you are single who is looking for a mate and you've kind of lost hope, you really need to check out higherbond.com. You've got Christians from all different denominations. It asks you how you feel around alcohol, premarital sex, kissing, like all the things. So it's a lot safer and a lot more inviting for Christians who actually have convictions when it comes to dating. And their in-depth matching algorithm and questionnaire really helps match you with people that you're going to be equally yoked with. And it's a lot more focused for those serious Christians like you guys who really want to live a life unto Christ and even date unto Christ. Every day they'll send you three to five matches. Those matches will get refreshed every 24 hours. And it's all geared to go against those people who just have those same little answers. Hey, what's up hot thing that they just spam to a bunch of hot girls every single day. It's veered away from that because you can only reach out to one person a day. So if you get reached out to on higherbond.com, you know you are that person's special reach out for the day. It's really kind of cool. Right now they're giving away three months completely free. Like you've literally got nothing to lose. And if you are married, join me and spread the word about this really great opportunity for Christians to actually have a safe place to date online. So make sure to check out higherbond.com forward slash how to faith the life. And thank you to Higher Bond for sponsoring this video. Yeah. Christian dating PT too. That is one fine man. He's not a Christian. What does that matter? It's called missionary dating. Yeah, I date to convert. Okay, I'm doing kingdom work and he's doing work for me because that is a whole six pack. Missionary dating, bad idea. You wanna be equally yoked. Even if you are a successful witness to somebody for the gospel, they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you are still gonna be significantly more mature in your faith probably than them. I would venture to say that is not your role as a romantic partner to disciple that person in the ways that they actually need. If you're human, the discipleship is probably going to take the back seat and the sanctification is probably gonna take the back seat to the romantic interests in the relationship. And so if you are romantically interested in somebody that has newly come to the faith, I would encourage you to get them in contact with somebody that maybe you're close with, that's of the same gender, that could discipleship 
them, that could take them under their wing and, and, and lead them in that discipleship. And you just stand back and you just watch and you just pray until the Lord has made it very clear that he's opening up the door for the start of a relationship. You're just asking for so many issues if you step into a relationship unequally yoked um, or with like a very new baby Christian. I don't wanna get too into it because all situations are different, but I don't think I've ever encourage anybody to do that. Um, I've never seen it come out good and fruitful. Ultimately, guys, we need to be doing all of this, having all of these kinds of conversations in prayer. If you enjoyed this video, check out this playlist here where we talk about Christian worship songs and evaluate the theology behind it. I think you're really gonna enjoy them. Check them out here.